But the Chagosians, you know, it is a kind of 19th century story of colonialism played out in the late 20th and 21st century. In the 1950s and 60s, U.S. military officials and other government officials identified Diego Garcia as a place they wanted to build a military base, and they wanted it without a local population. And they paid the British government 14 million pounds secretly in a way that uh, avoided the oversight of Congress and Parliament. Uh, they paid the British government to do the dirty work of getting rid of the Chagosians. Uh, U.S. officials were very, and British officials were, were very upfront about it. Um, and they crafted a public relations strategy with the help of, of British officials to call the Chagosians migrant or transient laborers. Uh, rather than the local native indigenous people that they knew them to be, that they had been living there for generations. They weren't migrant laborers. Uh, and, but this is how U.S. government officials represented the Chagosians when asked uh, by members of Congress uh, and at the U.N. And this was a way to hide what they were doing, displacing a, an indigenous people. Um, and uh, again, sadly reflects the kind of lying that, that U.S. government officials engage in far too often. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I don't know the history too much. I, I remember you referenced the Bikini Atoll. And w did we displace people from there, too, and basically move them off of that island? Exactly. I'm glad okay. you you asked about them. Um, yes, in the in the Marshall Islands, Bikini, the Bikini Atoll is probably the most well-known island where the United States military engaged in nuclear testing after World War II. And as part of that nuclear testing, uh, at least five, uh, and perhaps more diff separate groups of people from different atolls, different groups of islands uh, were displaced from their lands, um, from their islands, entire islands um, during nuclear testing. Uh, and, you know, some of the other examples of local, again, mostly indigenous peoples who've been displaced include people in Hawaii and in parts of Guam and Okinawa. Um, some in Okinawa were, were displaced to Bolivia, of all places, across the Pacific Ocean. Um, in Puerto Rico, people were displaced from their lands. Um, so sadly, the, the Chagosian experience is, is far from unique. Um, and, and like other people, the Chagosians are, are still struggling to get back to their homeland, uh, the people of the Bikini Atoll and, and other islands in the Marshall Islands have, have been struggling to go back home as well, and often to get proper compensation. And, and I think these are struggles that we should want to support as a matter of, of basic justice that, you know, shouldn't we all have the right to live in our homeland? Why, why should some be displaced against their will um, when others can live in the uh, the, the comfort of their homes. And really right there, I'm, I'm paraphrasing one of the Chagosian leaders, Olivier Bancou, um, who's asked these, these basic questions. Why, you know, why do some get human rights and others not? Why do some get to live in their homelands and others not? Uh, and he rightly asks whether it's a matter of race because all but one of the peoples who the U.S. military has displaced since the late 19th century have been peoples of color. Um, there was one, one case in, in Canada where um, locals were displaced uh, during World War II, but all the others were uh, local, brown and black folks, indigenous peoples uh, displaced against their will. And so uh, I think that, uh, you know, using uh, Olivia Bancou's insights uh, underlines the, the racism that has been fundamental to the U.S. military base system and to the larger war system 